What's happening, YouTube? You're in the building. The Life Gain Avengers current culture. It's me, <laughs> that living legend, Larry, and he's wearing a very, very nice T-shirt. And if you want one, shoplifegains.com, where you can get the nice and latest apparel that I rock. You can get historically black T-shirts. You can get my gear. Whatever gear you want, you can go find in there, but you won't find Miami Dolphin gear in the store. Living legend, Larry. Does anybody I, want that anyway? I do. Who would buy that? I do. Me and a Who lot of Dolphin. That? There's a lot of Dolphin Nations fans that will wear it. But, man, the way they done in this election, I might have to give my allegiance to somebody else because I'm still frustrated with Florida and, and Miami both in particular. Your states, both your states just basically just uh, gave, gave up the ghost. They screwed us, man. They screwed us. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're supposed to have Nita the Diva coming on. She said she was going to hop up here. If she comes, we'll love her. If she doesn't come, we'll still love her. We'll run the show without her. But, um, brother, well, we're going to talk about her, though. If she doesn't come on, we're going to talk about her, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, we might throw a joke or <laughs> lovingly. two. Lovingly. We might talk throw about a joke her lovingly. Or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We might throw a joke <laughs> or two at her. But, Larry, how you feeling today? How things going? And I'm rocking my life gains because, you know, today I made a move towards a life gain doing those options. So I got some uh, I got some one on one uh, financial tutorial uh, tutorials going with, uh, you know, with my man right there helping me out, get those options going. So we're going to see how it plans out, how it pay up, uh, pans out. So I have one in there for a week. I'm going to build that up and see if I can build up my, uh, you know, my brokerage account there and get some more money in it so I can do some bigger and bigger and bigger uh, options. And we'll see how it all pans out. So, yeah, yeah Larry, I got to bring that back, Larry, because when we when when we started going live, when the pandemic hit, so many people was hitting me on the email saying I helped them make all this money. Even one of my best friends hit me the other day and said that because of the stock tips I gave them, Larry. In three months, they have made seven thousand dollars. Nice. Uh, uh oh, there she oh, is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there she is. Nita the diva is in hey the guys. building. How you feeling? How, How are you, you feeling? We thought we were gonna have to talk. I'm about I'm doing you. good. I'm doing good. I I'm sorry. I was trying to do the internet setup, and I'm like right beside after that. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> oh boy well ladies and gentlemen we've got Nita the Diva in the building in the building and she's shouting out everybody be sure to subscribe to her channel she puts out real good content I went in there and checked out some of her videos the other day I had to leave a comment Angle. She, she did such a good job I had to leave a comment uh oh <laughs> I'm gonna have to go through yeah, man. I'm going to I'm have to go through there and, and leave some comments. All <laughs> kinds of comments. Just crazy comments. Reckless comments. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> all right, well. I'm going to go through there and just leave a whole bunch of lock and key emojis. Hey, see, oh, wait, sorry. That's, come, for, come on, that's, far, that's for come Professor on. Megram. My bad. Oh, my bad. Here, here we go. Already, <laughs> man. After you that tell everybody too. I'm my brother's <laughs> keeper and, and I helped you out today, you're going to go and do me like that? <laughs> For real, Larry, you gonna go do me like that? That's uh, that's that's messed up. I, I told you, man. I told you, it's all love. And mm -hmm. and the sooner that you recognize that Professor Megram loves her locks and keys, and that that uh, Killmonger is the rightful ruler of Wakanda, we will be on the same page entirely. Here we see, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. If you're new, this is all he's. Every time he say Killmonger, he's looking for this. Go ahead and burn all that. My king, we cannot do that. It is our tradition. When I tell you to do something, I mean that shit. Burn it all! This yep. Here. That's so, what it is. Burn it all. Professor Meagrim? What's going on, Moochie? <laughs> I saw the shout out on what? the... <laughs> oh, Lord. What's going on, Chris P? Cash he money. Her happy birthday in the tomorrow. Building. I, I did. I did. I was so happy to say happy birthday to her. She has a special, a special place in this house heart. We enjoy her. And so for that reason, neither the D, but you get to pick the first number one through six. Pick a number. 
One through six. I'm going to do halfway in three. Okay, Nita, Ooh, like pick that. three. Larry, you get to go next. Three. And Moochie, you get the number after Larry. I'm going to go with lucky number uh, six. Okay. <laughs> Larry got six. And birthday girl, Moochella, what number you pick? And then we're going to go ahead and dive on into Nita's pick. And Mooch. I know how I know how Nita feels about that particular subject. <laughs> Mooch. Okay. Well, while Mooch is getting herself together, <laughs> Nita the Diva pick number six. And and number six deals with the president, vice president elect, ladies and gentlemen, Kamala Harris. There's two stories dealing with Kamala Harris. So let's deal with number one. Now, this will make some of my black sisters out there feel a little, a little vindicated. Because we have another situation where Karen was the HUD was the wife of an exec from Google who had to step down from the school board because his wife was putting out racist stuff about Kamala Harris. And so a sister who happens to be a, a AKA said this, not only are Karen's jealous and extremely insecure, they create the most ridiculous excuses for their low life behavior. Her comment was disgusting. Unfortunately, women like her would never understand that there are actual women out there that work hard, acquire degrees, and climb the ladder on their own merit rather than ride the blazers of their Google exec husband. Wow. Nita the Diva, you get first dabs on that one. How do you feel about the how do you feel about the husband stepping down because his wife got caught being racist to Kamala Harris? We got uh, that dirty delay. You talking about me? Yeah, yeah, it's on I'm you. I'm sorry, my internet is still going in and out, so. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, I, you know, you I'm just kind of like, oh, well. Okay. You know, gotta, short and sweet. What you got to do, right? Short, short and sweet. Larry, I give it to you now. I'm going to say. He's stepping down. He trying to take his place. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's just gonna get it's just gonna oh, get so more bad. and more ridiculous as this goes on as 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 her time goes on and off is not only because she's black but because she's a woman and for whatever reason women seem to hate on each other they do and I don't know why but they hate on each other and so there's gonna be a lot of women out there saying reckless stuff because either she's a woman or because she's black or because she's both and so I think that all you can really do is just buckle up and hold on because this is we're gonna see a whole lot more of this, a whole lot yeah. more. Well, if if you think about how much of this we saw during Barack Obama and some of the vicious things that they said about Michelle Obama, I mean, this is just par for the course. And yeah, that I don't know if you guys remember, but that was a chick that worked at the bank in the minority department, ladies and gentlemen. A white chick that worked in the bank at the minority department who went online and said Michelle Obama was looked like a coon monkey, something to that effect, and got caught. And they fired yeah. her. Then when they fired her, they realized that this chick had been denying most of the minority loans from going through. So mm. this, this is an example of when you see this kind of mess, somebody's bold enough to put this out there. What do you think yeah. they're doing in their real jobs? Is they have a position where they're working with minorities or in a position where they're working with the public and the public they're serving is majority minority. So, I mean, you know, it's I hate that the husband got caught in it because he didn't say it. But, you know, it's probably not hard to make an assertion that these conversations go hey, on at home. Hey, guys, I'll be I'll be right. Oh. Take your time. Take your time. Take your so time. So one thing, one thing that I that I, one reason why I like to see stuff like this happen, where people are forced to resign or they're they're fired, is you know on the on the right, people get all upset and say, "Oh, this is cancel culture. This is wrong." Yada yada yada. But here's the thing: mm -hmm. cancel culture is nothing more than what our generation, good old fashioned folks, call accountability. That's it. 
What these people, people try and brand is couch, uh, cancel culture is nothing more than good old fashioned accountability. You say something bad, you do something bad, you have to pay the price for it. It's yeah. just that it's just that simple. It really is. And nowadays, when you have these brands and these companies that don't want to be associated with racist or 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 bigotry or homophobia or sexism or anything else because they know that it hurts their profitability, their it hurts their bottom line. They are quick to trim that fat. If you go and you and you act and say things reckless online, then you know there's a good chance when you're discovered, you're going to get fired. And if you think that you that if you think that you're smart enough to get away with this because you started some little fake account under a fake name, well, you just don't realize there's a lot of whole bunch of really talented internet sleuths out there that will yeah, dig up right. and find out who you are and what you are and expose you. And then there you go. Next thing you know, you're resigning from a school board or you're getting fired from a company. Or if you're just dumb and you're tweeting it on your public account, then you just end up getting fired. I mean, I remember a few years back, some woman was on a plane. She was about to take off and somebody said she, she had some sort of incident, I think, on the plane with someone. And she went off on some racist tangent about somebody, I think it was a fellow passenger. And it went viral for those few hours while she was in the plane. By the time she landed, getting where she was going, she had been fired. Her job basically tweeted out, she no longer works for us. And so, I mean, you people, you need to be careful. You need to be careful. I get it. We all have feelings about certain things, but you need to be careful about how and, and you know, where you express them. Well, I mean, so, at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, expressing that you're a racist is harmful and dangerous. You shouldn't be counseled for that, especially depending upon the position you hold wherever you work. If you're in a position where you're serving these type of people, you automatically telling people that you have disdain, dislike, and a bias toward that group. And especially right. when you talk about your husband is working on a school board. Come on, man. Yeah, you need to be fired. You can't be working right. or associated in those type of environments and think that you can get away with racism. If you just go on YouTube, then hey, fine. Have, it, have the racism all you want. Let YouTube get rid of you. But if you're working and you have to serve people, nah, you got to get counseled on that one. So, Larry, move us on to your number, which still deals with racism, bigotry, and more BS. Larry picked number six, ladies and gentlemen. And at number uh -oh. six, what do we have? This is something that has come back up on the new racist ass website called Parlay, not Parlor. They said, do not pronounce it parlor because they have ethics, ladies and gentlemen. QAnon, the Proud Boys, the KKK, Donald Trump's new place he's going to be on social media when he gets kicked off Twitter is Parlay. Well, this, Parlay, picture, huh? yeah, this picture came up on Parlay. All right. Now, a liberal put it up there and said, which knee bothers you the most? And Larry, what the hell do you think they were saying on Parlay? Oh, I'm sure they were just having all kinds of feelings about about it. I, I I'm afraid Larry, to even ask because I'm sure it's so Larry, hideous and disgusting. They they literally was having complete orgasms and erections on saying that Colin Kaepernick taking a knee bothers them more than the police officer taking a knee. That's the kind of crap you're going to see on Parlay. Larry, please yeah. discuss. I mean, it's just, it's sad. It's sad. And, and I'll tell you, one of the things that's sad about it is how completely unsurprising it is. I feel like for so long, we were, we were, for black folks, I think we were surprised, but not surprised. We weren't surprised that people were felt like this. We, I think for a long while we were surprised that people were so willing to be so open with it because we felt like, okay, we've made some progress. And then you had all this straight up open and out bigotry and, and racism. And I think a lot of us just felt really surprised that people were so willing to be open with the people that we thought were just regular everyday normal people when you when you go into your facebook feed or something and you see people that you knew from from work or from college or from high school or whatever 
and you're thinking, oh, these people were cool. We used to hang out and 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 chill or you know, grab a beer or whatever. And all of a sudden you realize, holy crap, this person's been harboring all these feelings that we're supposed to have been boys at some point or supposed to have been cool. And now I'm finding out that they're basically a, a racist. And yeah, you know, so it, it's I think a lot of people were a lot of black folks, I think we found ourselves a little bit surprised by this, even though we knew the feelings were out there. I think a lot of us were surprised to see it and the people in our lives, in our realm, in our circles. But now the terrible thing is, is that we're so unsurprised by it that it's just not shocking. Any, it, it's, it's still equally as disappointing, but it's just not shocking. So, yeah. Um and I'm not going to stay on this one long. Donald Trump made it cool for people that would normally repress those thoughts and opinions. He made it okay. He gave them the license to say the stuff because they're modeling after his behavior. He wants them to yeah. do this. You know, now the issue when regular people do it, you're not as protected as Trump. And in less than 60 some odd days, he's not going to be protected from the long arm of the law either, we think. And it, I'm with Larry. It bothered me that I learned people that I thought I was cool with, they was only cool with me when the status quo was mighty whitey. When there right. wasn't no Black Lives Matters or a movement for equality as strong as it is now, as long as the status quo was, okay, you go sit in your little corner, just mind your business, don't pipe your mouth up too much about you need these freedoms and equality, and we cool. We can we can shake hands. We can rub shoulders. We can go to the fair together and eat candy corn. You know. Now that yeah. we're starting to speak shut up, up and dribble. Right. Shut, basically, shut up and dribble is what they wanted. But now that there's actual legislation, there's actual finances behind the movement for equality. These people are coming out and they're fighting it tooth and nail. But, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to say it. That's not the only one we got on this on this ticket that deals with this. So we're going to move on to DeAndre Lucas's number. Larry, he had number five. And number five. All right, let's see what DeAndre's number, got for us. All right, and while we go through DeAndre's number, Tim, I need you to pick a number one, two, or four. Muchella, pick a number one, two, or four. And Tressa, pick a number one, two, or four. And we got another one on Kamala that we'll get to at the very end. But for now, we're going to go to number five. Now, we all said our rest in pieces to Alex Trebek the other day. But ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> there's a good brother out there that they want to take his place. And you all, if you're an 80s baby like me, you watch this show right here. And this man made this show famous. And then we'll discuss who they want to be the next Jeopardy host. Butterfly in the sky. I can go twice as high. Take a look. It's in a book. A reading rainbow. I can go anywhere. Friends to know and ways to grow. Reading rainbow. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, yes, the good brother. The good, good brother, LeVar Burton. They've got a push for him to be the next Jeopardy host. And Larry, I must say, I learned to read because of this brother. And Larry, I must say, <laughs> I watched Star Trek because of this good brother. And Larry, I must say, how the hell did that brother get that job back in, in 1982 when they really didn't care about giving blacks jobs dealing with kids, he got the job. How do you feel about him stepping in and taking the place of Alex Trebek? Man, that's cool. I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I would not have thought about him in that role, but I, I, I'm feeling it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And yeah, oh yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm liking it. I, I, I mean, I hope he does. I hope he takes it over. I hope he does well with it. I mean, he's one of those people that I think is universally liked. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. If you're looking for if you're looking for a safe pick for to fill that role, somebody who is liked, someone who's talented 
and apparently someone who's reliable considering the lengths that that he's been on various shows you know I just can't imagine you're going to go wrong with LeVar Burton. I mean, that's just absolutely incredible. I'm happy for him. I hope he gets it, and I hope he makes a ton of money, and I hope the show continues on for, for years to go. So, Ladies and gentlemen, how can you go wrong with this brother? Universally regarded as a man of integrity, a man of swagger. Um, the only thing they question about him is, is he gay or not? But who the hell cares about that, the way he's conducted himself, the way he's carried himself? If, like I said, if you're an 80s baby like me, you watch Reading Rainbow. You was addicted to that show in a time when they really wanted to put a focus on kids learning how to read. Hell, I miss that right now. I might go back and show my child some of these old episodes when she's at the age of doing reading. And you got hooked on LeVar Burton. And if it wouldn't have been for Reading Rainbow, I wouldn't have won gold medals for reading. I wouldn't have followed him in Star Trek. And I wouldn't be able to give you a good body of evidence as to why he would be a good host for jeopardy but ladies and gentlemen if you're a 70s he, baby like me no oh if you're a 70s baby like me when you went to your white school and the kids try to try to watch roots and come at you and say your name's toby and you punch him in the face and say my name's kunta and there you go and then they're on the ground crying bloodied up and you're standing over top of and talking about my name's kunta bitch that's what's <laughs> what yeah ladies and gentlemen we would be remiss if we didn't talk about how this man should have got an Oscar for playing Kunta Kinte in Alex Haley's Roots. I, Larry, well, I guess it would have had to have been an Emmy technically because I, I oh, think it was it was a, a it was a mini series on TV. So I guess it technically would have had to be an Emmy, but they, it was so good. He should have got an Oscar. Larry, that man, he should be in somebody's Hall of Fame. He that Roots should be talked about in every historical reference possible. And his performance as basically Toby, because he didn't Kunta. want to say that name. It it Kunta. took them, it took them what Larry like ten hours before that boy would say Toby. I mean, they whipped him red, and he finally broke down. That's how and they I'm had to so chop his damn feet off. Yeah, well, by then he was the dad from Good Times. By then. <laughs> He, he had done crossed over to the daddy from good times. But that was grown up Toby then. But still, LeVar Burton, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just a classy historical icon in Hollywood. Give him that job at Jeopardy. He's not dead. I know somebody that don't need the job. Steve Harvey does not need another damn job because right, that man got so many jobs right now. How is he going to fit this one in? He That would be when he ties shoes up. He can't get no more yeah. jobs. Like, no Steve Harvey, no Wayne Brady. Leave Wayne Brady on the Price is Right. Let somebody else yeah, he's get He's good on there, too. Yeah, yeah. He's good on yeah. there. I'm okay yeah. with that. You know, I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing um, I wouldn't mind seeing a woman on that show. I wouldn't mind seeing someone like, uh, you know, a comedian, someone maybe like Amy Schumer or, huh? or um, you know, Whitney Cummings or Whitney. Uh, what's the other Whitney? What's Whitley's name? Whitley. Um, what's the one? The. Um, Oh man, Whitley something or the other. Nah, I'm gonna I'm look her up right quick. Nah, I don't, I don't want to see no Amy Schumer. Uh, I'd rather no? see LeVar Burton. No, I would too. But I'm just saying, if you were gonna go for a okay. woman, I wouldn't mind seeing a woman in that role. I'm okay with. I, I'm happy with LeVar Burton on there. I just I'm Here's saying, if they were name. to go with a woman, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be offended by it. Here's another name that would be great for that show: Neil deGrasse Tyson, my cousin. The astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. I, that's I that's the know, perfect man. that's the perfect uh, show for him. That's a perfect uh, show for him. It's, it's education. He kind of has that Savani witty uh, humor, that dry witty savant humor. But he's cool. He's a cool nerd. I could see him doing it too. Now Lavar Burton is a better choice, but I could easily see Neil deGrasse Tyson doing it. And the brother drives a Tesla. Y'all know how I feel about that. <laughs> even, even though I'm upset with Elon Musk, Elon Musk about to make me go somewhere else for my next electric car. He don't shut his, his mouth up. But, you know, mm. leave your comments if y'all like LeVar Burton. Larry, we're going to move on to the next one. Tressa C, pick number four. And number four goes right back to our girl, Kamala Harris. And Larry, guess who Kamala Harris dated way back in the day? You would you you never gonna guess. I'm gonna give you one guess. 
Um, I'm gonna say it, uh, well, it was a brother. It was a brother that had a I TV show. I know she had an affair with Willie Brown. No, man. Take a look at this. Kamala Harris was dating Montel Williams before the MS days. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Kamala right there with Montel Williams. And so, wow. you know, when, when, they, when, when they found out about this, of course, they went to ask him, what was it like dating her? This is what Montel said. And I briefly dated about 20 years ago when we were both single. So what? I have a great respect for Senator Harris. I have to wonder if the same stories about her dating history would have been written if she were a male candidate. So then, Larry, they go and ask Kamala, you know, what, what does she think about dating Montel? So from her Twitter, she posted this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Larry, thoughts and opinions of Kamala Harris dating one of the legends of daytime TV, Montel Williams. Well, I'll say what the you know, when they're talking about look into the uh look into the, that um <laughs> that vapor rod, what was that thing they called it? The um whatever oh, that God. thing was they would flash your memory. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it either if she if she wrote that or her staff wrote that. At least it shows that she has a good sense of humor. Mm -hmm. So she has a good sense of humor and a fairly solid command of uh, you know, of of uh of current cultural uh, you know, um, you know, cultural iconography, I guess, with the whole men in black thing. So I, I'm cool right. with that. I thought it was funny. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm with that. I think that they both handled it in good humor. Um now, Montel saying that if she was a man, they wouldn't be worried about her dating history. Um, I'm a big, I'm, I, I don't completely agree with that because we was worried about Donald Trump dating history. We was really worried about Donald Trump um, marital, extramarital affair history. But that was because Donald Trump brought that on himself. And yeah. a, lot, a lot of people was worried about Bill Clinton's extramarital stuff, but again, Bill Clinton brought that on himself too, getting head in the office while eating the pizza. But before those two, did we even hear, before those two, did we hear any questions about any other president or pres vice president's dating history before that? I can't think of anybody else, Larry. No, we did. <clears throat> we did. We heard about, you know, we heard about, uh, a brief rumor about uh, George H. Bush having an affair while he was in the White House. What? And he shut that down really quickly. And wow. there was, you know, there was all those, there was all that talk about, about Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the, you know, whatever there were, there were talks about potential other, you know, other affairs that he had. So, I mean, there, it's been, it's been out there. It's just that, um, I think in the past, there were there was sort of this thing. There was sort of this gentleman's agreement amongst reporters and and politicians that that sort of stuff was taboo and off limits, and you didn't mm -hmm. talk about it so much. And it only really, it only really came out when it became so public and so obvious that it would have been malpractice on those reporters' part to not report it, to not talk about it. And I think in large part, it still is that way. I don't think that I don't think that most of these reporters go out there looking for this stuff. But, you know, if it's out there, it's out there. If it gets found. And I think part of it now, too, is because we're we're in such a so much more of a connected society than we were before. It's just so much easier for people to find information out. You know, I mean, if you have a photo like that of. Montel Jordan and Kamala Harris. I mean, somebody has that. It's going to be out there and it's going to get found. And, you know, I mean, there's just, what are you going to do about that? You hey, know? Man, she got a lot of stuff hanging out the front of that shirt back in them days, man. Do you, yeah. know, that, you know they going to get her. <laughs> they well, going to get her. I mean, if, I mean, here's the thing. After we've seen the first lady naked, you yeah. know, there doesn't really leave much room for anybody to criticize someone about wearing a an evening gown. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. I mean, let's just be real. We've literally seen right. every part of the first lady. So you look, just, you, look, you looked at every part, Larry? I didn't look at every part. I closed my eyes on half of it. Yeah, my eyes were wide. My eyes were, were uh my eyes were wide open. Or what's that what's that express? My eyes were wide shut or you know. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, let me let's move on, ladies and gentlemen. We got Nita the diva back. Are you you might check the sound ready, Nita? I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, the next that subject is all good. next subject is all on you, Nita the Diva, and it is the new housewives of Utah. And Larry, they got some skeezers on that show. Larry, uh -oh. one of these chicks married her great granddad her great grand her great stepfather her, her step her step grandfather her step grandfather Whoa. yeah man but before Whoa. before we let nita get larry you can't make this stuff up and and utah you know Whoa. is mormon bill utah is mormon bill larry and you know mormons didn't like black people till 1977 so it's a lot of stuff going on on that show but before step we let Nita step grandfather, and it's a sister, Larry. It's a sister that did it. Yes. It, it ain't no West no, it's Virginia. Not. No, Larry. it's not. Larry, and no. pastor of a church. Larry, no, I refuse to believe. Larry, I am, in, I am in complete and 100% denial. No, Larry, nope. this is not somebody that live in West Virginia and hang off cliffs by their front teeth. This is I a sister. I do not believe you. Okay, well here we go. We're gonna take a look at the clip. Then we're gonna let Nita. We're gonna we're gonna probe Nita about the show. Here we go. Perfection is attainable. Hashtag blessed on that one. I am a purebred pioneer Mormon. Oh, I'm Jewish and from Chicago. I'm actually Pentecostal. We are Jewish by heritage, Mormon by choice. Oh, Lord have mercy. It is a very big deal that I'm no longer Mormon. I was raised Mormon, but I'm converting to Islam. Assalamu alaikum, bitches. Woo! A good Mormon doesn't drink, doesn't have sex. Shy, oh, shy. Nice to meet you. I was bringing the decadence, and they were bringing the depression. For this. I love this jacket because it makes me happy, not because it's Dolce & Gabbana. Patiently, quietly, faithfully, worship me. There's a lot of dark under the crust of perfection. Pray for me, baby. There's a lot of misrepresentations of who's friends with who in this circle. Don't wave your finger. She hates my guts. Do you think they're home right there? Well, you can't accuse me of being a singer. I don't judge you. I don't care enough to judge you. This is how we do it here. <laughs> are, are there a couple of trans women in there? See, <laughs> look, I've tried to explain to Larry several times. These what? rich celebrity women, when they go get the plastic surgery work done, okay. they go for this tranny look. They go for the Kim Kardashian half tranny look because, Larry, they wouldn't be doing this stuff if these dudes with money didn't like it, which ought to tell you a little more about the community, but they wouldn't be transforming their bodies, their booties, their face to look like trannies if these dudes didn't like it. Now, Nita the Diva, mm. summarize episode one. Tell us about these wild women and it's some crazy stuff going Before on. We move on Lamont. Before we move on, I just have to say, I think that term might be considered derogatory. So we have to be careful oh, with that's it. Right. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I you think absolutely it might be right. considered. You yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you meant any malintent. No, I, I think didn't. it's just a I matter of, of, of people understanding that right. I believe that term is a derogatory term. So. so so let me let me apologize to the transgender community. Y'all should know if you follow this channel, when we did the P Valley, I let y'all know where I stand about that. I want y'all to be able to do whatever the hell you want to do with whom you want to do it, Uncle Cliff style. So forgive me because I grew up in an era where that wasn't derogatory or i was taught it wasn't derogatory so that habit has taken some time to go away so forgive me my transgender brothers and sisters 
Neither the diva. And I'm gonna let you yours. know that gay, straight, black, white, Asian, Mexican, doesn't matter what you are. I'm gonna talk about everybody. Everybody. Everybody can get that work, right? Everybody right. can catch that smoke. That's it. Everybody can get it. And see, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to tone down since my baby girl's here, but Larry keep right on poking the bear. That's <laughs> You gonna put that on me, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Because we, when we first started doing this, Nita, it used to be me getting in all the trouble. You know, <laughs> it used to, it used to be me doing all the jokes, me doing all the cussing, and then somehow or another, the closer we got to my daughter being born, it just morphed into Larry being the one getting in all the trouble. You to take up the mantle. Yeah, you man. Know? But my phone buzz. I got you, baby. I got mm -hmm. you. And as soon as Nita. Soon as Nita gives her evaluation, we're gonna come right back to you. So, Nita, tell us about the first episode of the Real Housewives of Utah. These are some crazy women. You're right, Salt Lake City, Utah. These Salt girls are good. The thing is about the Housewives franchise. I don't watch any of the white shows because I just can't get with the white women problems, white rich problems, and yeah. it hurts my nerves. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> The only reason why I'm watching Salt Lake City is because they have the black girl Mary that got all the controversial stuff going on with her. So I'm interested oh, to see God. where she's going. But yeah, these yeah. group of um, ladies, they are extravagant. They are hmm. rich, rich. They ain't nothing like Potomac. They ain't hmm. nothing like Atlanta. Hmm. These women got that bank. Now, so, let, hmm. now let me say this, Nita, because I did watch some of it with Crystal. Uh huh. These women married into this money, Larry. At Man. least three of these women, their whole plot in life was to find a rich man. Now, this is something we should tell African Americans. That this is something that they should, tell, they should tell their white kids, white daughters, this is what you do. You go to college, find you a rich man, get taken care of. One of these girls Man. on this show, Larry, got in a relationship with a dude when she, the dude is like 56 years old she was 17 and somehow or another she was pregnant by the time she was 18. do you not think he wasn't hitting that when she was underage give me a break i, I think he was only 45. oh he oh, oh yeah yeah he was he, <laughs> yeah yeah oh my bad my bad okay i add, i added 11 that years even that doesn't even pass the that doesn't even pass the regular old rule. That doesn't even pass the half your age plus seven rule. <laughs> right. But I just Ooh. wanted to throw that in there, Nita. Finish your soliloquy. Oh, yeah. So no, that that's right. Um, most of them, um, and even the girl who married into wealth, but it didn't work out, she still <laughs> ended up Not making really. it big. Yeah. Because she ended up um opening up a salon, a spa, because you know that's all these white people rich people want to do is get pretty get do pampered. all the procedures and all that stuff and yes yeah, so she's made a whole uh empire of money as well outside of him so i mean it's interesting I'm not mad at the hustle right right i'm not mad at all then they have this one um housewife she don't want to cook she says she don't want she i mean i would think you might want to hire a chef to get some healthy food, but she's like, "Nah, we we eat at uh, fast food restaurants all the time. I don't be doing all this. I don't do all that, mm. you know." So we got a little uh, a mixed bag. We got this one lady. She's Hawaiian. She's the oh. one with all the Botox in the mouth. Oh and the, my lord, she hey, is a mess. You can't that tell Larry if you told this woman she wasn't good looking, you had to cut the bitch. You can't, <laughs> Larry. I'm telling you, what's a Hawaiian you. chick doing in the mountains? Money, <laughs> money. That's where it's at. Money. Okay. You go. You go to Salt Lake City, and because of the way the setup is, you can. I mean, literally, once you get to a certain income level, you're a royalty in that area. Because when you look at it, mm -hmm. it reminds you of the Las Vegas area. It looks like you're in a valley surrounded mm -hmm. by beautiful mountains, and the it people in in Salt Lake City. Okay get treated like royalty you don't pay for nothing that's why you rich <laughs> you they let you have balls battalions and everything in salt lake city for free because you're in the in crowd so mm. 
if you guys want to see an exercise in either how to get you a rich man, what you will look like with plastic surgery, or the things you have to sacrifice to get that rich white guy, definitely watch this one. Or if you ever thought about becoming, getting into the Mormon church and getting you a rich white guy, because it seems like, damn, there's a whole lot of rich white dudes in that Mormon church, Nita. What mm. you think? I agree. I yeah. agree. That's, that's All right, I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I might it, check it, it out. What day does it come on? Shoot. Didn't it come on last night? No, no, no. It came on earlier this week. Like oh, Tuesday? I, I think DVR it was Tuesday. 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 Uh, I might check my DVR. Yeah, yeah check, check out one episode, Larry. Check okay. out the first one. Make sure the you first one? check out the first one. Because it kind of gives you the whole lay of the land and lets you know how the ladies are. Man. They gave like their backstory. So you need to know kind of a little bit of that. So yeah. Mm. I because it was entertaining enough. What you think, Lamar? Oh, it was just looking at them chicks is entertaining. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, you trying to figure out if any of them trying to audition to be the new Joker in DC's Batman. That's oh, how entertaining it is. I mean, yeah, that's, oh. that's, the one, that's the one that looks like a um um she looks like a wrestler. The one with the the mm. hard jawline that you yeah, roll. Yeah. Oh, she's a little bigger, like you don't the see broad her. shoulders. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. she got a V yeah. taper, man. You her V taper bigger than mine, and I live heavy. <laughs> then you had this other chick, Larry, who had this pie face. And I don't know, I, I like this, she's a case of Larry. When you see a woman like this, you think the first thing you think to yourself is, okay, your looks ain't get it, so you must be able to slob a knob real good. I'm just saying. I'm, see, I'm, I'm just see, saying. Now you're getting back and getting yourself back in trouble, man. I, I, I'm you're just getting saying. Yourself man. Back in I, trouble. I, 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 that's why we're moving on. We're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna move on, and I'll let you be the judge, Larry. I'll let you be the judge. But I'm just saying, man. All right, so see, my, see I'm looking out for you. Looking yeah, out man. for you. Yeah, my folk, uh, Moochella, who likes Mooch. to hang with the fellas. She picked number two, and, and this one is the try not to laugh challenge, the church edition. <laughs> I haven't seen it. <laughs> so y'all better not laugh at some of this stuff because God don't like you laughing at people in that church. Here we go. Oh, no. Damn. Damn. Just damn. Guess what? <laughs> oh my God. I saw right the enemy wanted to win. <laughs> It looks like he's doing the, the Tootsie Roll. Wow. Brother. Oh, oh, hell. Here we go.
Uh oh. Don't do it. No, please. No. <laughs> when I think of this goodness, <laughs> Down and get your eagle on, girl. <laughs> oh, what was up with the white people in that church running laps, though? That Larry, laps. they thought they was in a Southern Baptist church. Homeboy was on the podium doing the oh. chicken wing to get the people to start running around the church like good. good. And that Larry, that chick was running. Her hair was flowing and shit. Did you she see was. that? She. Her hair was flowing. She was spinning, man. And what about your boy, the pastor, in those smooth gator boots with the high water pants, tap dancing? Boy. You know what's funny is that if you look at the dude that was right behind him, that was oh, sitting over God. there with his with his uh with oh, his blue God. you know his blue raspberry uh uh you know shoes on, he's sitting up there with his water bottle, just flitting with his water bottle, looking at the dude like this dude's crazy. <laughs> Neither the diva. Which one was the funniest to you? Good God, everybody. <laughs> when, they, when he fell. <laughs> oh. Did y'all see me? I screamed. I saw, I saw you. I, was, I started to unmute you so everybody could hear you scream, but I didn't. <laughs> oh, my God. Larry, which one was your funniest one? Please. I'll tell you the one I felt bad for was that first one when dude fell off the stage and no one even helped him up. The lady that was on stage, she just sort of went to the front, looked down at him like, ooh, and then she, <laughs> she said no one helped him up. Larry, that was a woman that fell off the stage, man. Oh, I was like, they didn't help her. I was like, that's just wrong. They just left that poor person just down there and she but, didn't find her way back up. But you saw what she said. She said, the enemy threw me down there and the Lord brought me up <laughs> there you go God. well ladies and gentlemen leave us a comment which one was funny to you we're going to move on to our final topic and y'all know it's power but before we get there let me shout out my boy buzz Bzz, buzz came through three. and left us a nice tip and he wanted me to remind you guys don't you forget about that ga race the website you go. you go to is right there GACenate.com, go donate. I've donated. If we want to get a semblance of balance back in this country, a semblance to somewhat you put the back, we've got to do some surgery on a wound that a band aid can't fix. And if yeah. we want to get that balance back, it is hey, absolutely itches. crucial that we win country this race itches. in Georgia. Absolutely crucial. Go down to that website right there, GACenate.com. Donate five dollars, donate three dollars, whatever you can. Help Stacey Abrams because I want to see her get a cabinet seat. I want to see her help this country. She fixed Georgia where the gerrymandering is so bad they want to change the name to Lewis Mandarin. It ain't just gerrymandering. That's how bad it was down there. She fixed it. And I think she could do some good things for the country. And don't let Mitch McConnell be in position to block her. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Power dropped a trailer this week. And did y'all uh -oh. think I was going to go without getting that trailer? No. No, uh -oh. no, 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 no. Larry, and this trailer does have a reveal for my girl, and I am not happy about it. <laughs> that, <laughs> they got my, they got my girl, Professor Megram, in here. And Larry, when I, te when I tell you I am not happy the way they trying to paint this woman who is an educator. I'm not happy. I'm a player, let you look at it, but I'm on a razor's edge with that. Don't you say nothing. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, let's take this bit by bit. 
Now, I'll probably do a full breakdown trailer later, but because of time constraints, we're going to break this down piece by piece. Um, Nita and Larry, did y'all catch this? Look who they done brought back into the fold. Yeah, I saw that with a little fine self. Right. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Pretty insane. Yeah, she I. She I. She's in college. <laughs> That's cool to look. Yeah, she she I. She I. She, she ain't no professor, but she I. She I. So. Yeah, she's a blazer. What? What? What role, what role this, do y'all think she's going to serve in the rest of this season? I'll give it to you first, Nita. Well, you know, I was thinking about that. I was wondering was were we going to delve more into her side of the drug game because she's still kind of connected with um, the school that they used to go to. I forget the name of it. Church, um, church, church. Church, right. So I'm thinking because they're both in the drug game and you know, I'm thinking that's how it's going to play. I don't think it's going to play romantically just yet, but I mean, that's that's my choice for Reek. I want him to, you know, kind of be with her. I don't really mess with Lauren or um, Diana like that, but yeah, I think she's going to just be in a drug game some kind of way. Larry, what you think about Effie? And I know you just want her because you would kick Ramona forehead to Ammonia quick for some Effie. Effie's a blazer. I like Effie, and she's legit. She's smart. She's good looking. You know, she seems to know how to play the game on, from both sides of the fence. So I like her. I think she's good for Tariq. I think both of them together will wreak some havoc on the world, and I like it. Um, I think she's probably going to come back in and end up being, you know, she's – I don't know if she's going to be his distro. She might end up working for him. He might need to move some weight and be able to get her to, to move it for him. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes, though. Because new, new theory for me. Y'all heard it here first. Well, you've been heard it here first, but you're going to hear more in the theory. I've been saying that I feel like she has a connection to the Tejada daddy somehow, some way. And mm. I think that it's going to get revealed somehow, some way. And that might be the way Tasha can put pressure on the Tejada daddy who is putting pressure on Tasha through him threatening to hurt Tariq somehow, some way. So mm. we'll see. Now here's I know the next Diana needs to check her little feelings. She's up there getting all butt hurt, <laughs> talking about you have somebody in there. Talking about, I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you explanations. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Yes, right. the hell, yes, the hell he does owe her an explanation. You doing business with my family. What, the, what y'all talking mm. about? You, that doesn't mean anything. You doing business with my family. You took me to a party, got me drunk. And left me sitting on the step. You owe me something, Tariq. No, you let, he didn't get her drunk. You that let that me was, where Tariq got, got his drink spiked. You let me take a gun out of your wallet. And if oh, you let me take he let you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, she robbed him and he let her take a gun. Yeah, yeah. yeah you <laughs> let me take that gun out of my wallet. So here's another yeah. significant. Who said that? Who said that? That's a uh, spill the TTV said Diana needs to stop stalking Tariq. He sure does. She sure does. And hey, it's man. not like she's going to be able to catch him. Haven't she? Hasn't uh, Diana noticed how fast Tariq can run? Hey. If you don't want to be with her, he's just going to run away. She's not going to be able to catch him. <laughs> if you missed the Wednesday <laughs> show, me and Larry want to get paid when Reebok comes out with the Reek box yep. because of Tariq and all his running. You heard it all here first. Running. All You know now, the Reek trainers. Now, here's the next, the, the next thing that we, we're going to focus on. You see Mef McClain, and y'all remember <laughs> him and Cooper Sacks struck a deal that they're going to take down Tariq. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there was another clip in here where you saw this right here, Cooper Sacks interrogating someone he's trying to get to flip. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do y'all know who I think they both staring at intently? Um, Larry, I'll give you the first dibs. And who do you think that I think they're talking to? I think it's I think it's what's her name, homegirl, the uh, the black the black attorney that used to be a, a, a ADA. Nope, and, and I don't think or, that's who it is. Neither. Who do you think it is? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. I, didn't. I think Cooper Sacks, when he was in that room interrogating somebody, ladies and gentlemen, I think that was Tommy. This is that's the only. Other than other than Tamika, which Larry, that's a great guess. It could definitely be Tamika, but We're I not think gonna see Tommy on the stand. 
There's no well, way in hell they're getting Tommy in a courtroom. Tommy might sit over there at the defendant's table. There's no way Tommy's going to be on the stand talking to anybody. Well, in this particular picture right here, I think that Tamika is on the stand. But when Cooper Sachs was in another room that wasn't the courtroom, I think that was Tommy. I think mm. that's Tommy. I think that's Tommy. And Tommy got dirt on Cooper Sachs, so Cooper Sachs ain't going to be able to push Tommy around. He can ask, but he's not going to be able to push Tommy around. Yeah, I just don't think I just don't feel it. Tommy not Tommy don't play that. He's not a snitch. Yeah, he's not nah. a type that's gonna be going into the building talking to the feds. And, and nah. they got they, they've got to find a way to bring Tommy back into the story, and it's gonna be one way or the other one like that. Now here's another they're gonna make us when they bring him back in, they're gonna bring him in such a way that we still like Tommy and we still think of Tommy in the same way because they want us to watch his show. Yeah. So they can't bring him in and make him a snitch because everybody would be like, oh, that's some weak-ass stuff right there, and then we're not going to want to watch his show. I think it would just depend on the manner in which he snitched. If he snitched on someone like Cooper Sacks to throw Cooper Sacks under the bus to save Tasha and Reed, y'all would still be fine with Tommy. Y'all but he don't have no motive to do that, though. He don't fuck that's with true. it. Neither one of them. That's true. Mm. He don't. Here's another significant picture, ladies and gentlemen. The Hellraiser... I guess the, the Tommy type of personality on this show has been Kane. But look at this. Who in the hell is tough enough to beat up on Kane? Uh -oh. Somebody, look at that little arm right there. Is that Professor Jabari throwing Kane up against the wall? <laughs> is, is, that old copy, is that old copyright Jabari? Let me show you his copyright ass face. Is that old copyright Jabari throwing Kane up against the wall, Larry. Who is it beating up on Kane? It could be, it could be Jabari, or it could be that we just don't realize that Effie has some MMA skills. Man, he see Nita. I, I'm just saying, Nita. we don't know. She might know some. She might know some jujitsu or some some taekwondo Stop or some. You know, she might be up there just putting hands on people. Okay, Nita, who do you think that is beating up on Kane? I'm not. I'm not. I don't really know, but I do know that they we, they showed um the picture of the guys um with the diamond mask or something. So there are other players that's coming into this. So I'm thinking it might be something that's along that line, but right. yeah, it could be that other click, the one, the, the other one that he went in there and they shot up. GTG, yeah. baby. Yeah, um, it could be I, that quick. And the only way they got him like that is sneaking him. Because right. I don't think right. that nobody got it like coming at him like face to face. It's like maybe he, it just happened out of happenstance. Somebody ran up on him and something like that. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, right. I was going to say, it ain't no way copyright Jabari is fighting Kane. I think it's GTG. Because mm. remember... They beat up on GTG the last time we saw a gang GTG, and GTG wants some heat. So that's probably them in those red masks. That's probably them beating up on Kane and Light. Neither the Diva said. You ain't just going to run up on him any kind of ways and get him up against the wall. You snuck him from the back of his head. Pop, right. pop, bam. Now, this is what you Larry know, wants. You know what, Go. Lamont? The thing that yeah. never made sense to me about that whole GTG thing is, is that they went there and, and beat that dude down and and they basically said didn't do anything they took it because that was their connect they didn't want to lose their connect but then but then mary's character went and said she was cutting them off anyway mm -hmm. so i mean if they're cut off why would they not i mean maybe they didn't know in that moment that they weren't cut off but why wouldn't they go and and try and get revenge i mean they it, for one they know where she lives at if they beat them down like that and then cut them off why wouldn't they just go to their house and just straight firebomb it just burn that whole piece up and, and wait for them to come outside. Just light them up. I mean, just have a couple of trucks outside with their guns, low firebomb their house. And when they come running out like rats, just start lighting them up. Well, Larry, you don't want to be that obvious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't want to be that. You want your revenge, but you don't want to be that obvious. You want to be poetic when you take your vengeance. And you want to do mm -hmm. it in the middle of the night. And you want to do it in a way where people can't eyewitness who did it. Okay. So now this is what Larry been waiting for. And I almost didn't even do this. I almost didn't even capture Dilson because I didn't want to hear nobody's mouth. 
Now, I'm going to go ahead and warn y'all black folks and some of y'all Anglos that follow this channel, Anglo-Saxons people. I love y'all too. And my Trinidad folks and my folks in Europe. I'm about to go ahead and give y'all the warning right now. I do not. And when I say do not, I do not want to see nobody putting no locks, no keys, no basketballs, no nets, no Air Jordans, anything that highlights the wedding of Professor Megram's underwear. I don't want to see it when I put this up here because I know what y'all going to say. And I'm going to give it to you, Nita, the diva, because I don't really want to hear what Larry got to say. But take a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what the hell is that dude up there looking like Eddie Winslow? What is you doing, Professor? <laughs> what is you doing, Professor Meagle? What? Come on, man. He's up what? there smashing Bill Bellamy's son. Oh my God! Oh, so that's why he looked like Eddie Winslow, man. <laughs> oh my Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Neither the diva. I just got to go ahead and ask: Is he going to get this chick pregnant? Oh my no. god. Oh Lord, neither the D were putting see I Nita, <laughs> you're you're muted. Larry, I'm gonna go to you. So uh, this chick out here putting keys uh, all in the comments. Nope, nope. I nope, was nope. looking for the lock, I couldn't find it. So, so, god, oh. go, but go ahead, Nita. Go ahead. What you think? Is he gonna get her pregnant? Um, I, I swear I hope not. I hope not. However, I just noticed that he curved her real light. What? Nasty. Like I was like, oof, he, was, this was not a good look. I was like, oh man, it's like he look how he walking away from her. Like, exactly. she, done lost, she done lost all her glow, her sex appeal, all that stuff. Like he's he's over it. She probably, mm -hmm. I mean, she heard the lock and key. She probably came back just for some more. <laughs> Did you see the <laughs> windows? There wasn't a lock on them. There wasn't a single lock on those windows, wide open. <laughs> what? What? What, what, what? Go ahead, Larry. Your, your turn. Since everybody want to get a turn on the door and mess with the locks and keys, your turn, Larry. Oh, yeah. What you All think? I have to say is, you know, it looks like they're probably quarantined together. That's just all that's happening. I'm trying to give you a little, I'm trying to throw you a bone. It looks like they're just quarantined together. Maybe he was over there for some tutoring and then the pandemic hit and then they were locked down. He couldn't leave. And since, you know, he's just, yeah, that's all that happened. That's why they look so comfortable together because they've been locked down together for a couple of months during the, during the quarantine. That's all it is, <laughs> you know? Why? No, Larry, if that was all it is, why is his pants almost at the line of his crotch? See, I was trying to give it. To, I was trying to cut you some slack for your girl, but now you're gonna make me have to go in on her. <laughs> well, before you, I'm go, just saying. Yeah. You know, you know what it is. You know, know. you know what it is. Look, he's done. Like he like like Nina even said, it. he's done. He's like, yeah, I've had fun. She looks. She's so. Look at that. She can't even. She can't even do her hair anymore. She's just so broke down. <laughs> oh my lord. She's looking at him all thirsty, and he's like, whatever. I'm out. He like, chick, you go know? make me a sandwich. Go make me a sandwich, man. Lord have mercy. <laughs> but you nice know place, what? Though. I like those big windows. It sort of looks like a big, uh, sort of like a big warehouse loft studio space or something with those yeah, windows. I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know? well while y'all making fun of her, I bet y'all won't be making fun of him because look at this right here. And I'm telling you what this means. Larry, this right here is showing you he's about to get his ass injured. I'm telling you. Maybe. When they show pictures like this, he's going to tweak his ACL. Something bad is going to happen to this brother on the court, and it's going to all be because he took advantage of a professor. He, <laughs> oh, he, 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 he took advantage, took advantage of a woman. Huh? He took I think it's the other way around. Oh, no, 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 no. When you have the problem and somebody accosts you, <sighs> that means someone took advantage of you. You know, oh, and, and so be, and, and, and because of that, karma is going to come back on TV and kick him in the butt. He's going to slam dunk that ball, come down and break his ankle in two places, break his knee in three places. Goodbye, NBA. And um, that's going to be end of that lock and key relationship for them. Click. It's unlocked. Maybe. Uh, Maybe what will happen is Zeke is going to get injured, and then what's it? And then uh, and then his cousin's going to turn around and get an art scholarship and end up going to school there. Who, Drew? 
Drew, Drew's gonna get an art scholarship and go to school there, well, and then he's fine. gonna marry that. That he's gonna marry that basketball player, so they still get the money coming in. Hey, I'm fine with that. You know, as long as, long as we don't have anyone taking advantage of the professor, she needs help. Oh, that's done. That's done. Zeke, yeah, Zeke didn't knock her up. She's, you know, he's gonna he's gonna be able to stay in school because once his scholarship's gone, because he can't play, they're gonna want to get rid of him. But she's gonna go to bat for him because she's going to be knocked up by him. So she's going to be like, yeah, I think you should stay because she's going to need her baby daddy around. And, and and this is the last one, then we'll get out of here. How is Tariq going to use Professor Copyright? That's, that's my new nickname for him, Professor Copyright. <laughs> Nita, I give it to you dude, first. Dude was tripping. I don't know what the hell he was thinking, man. Tariq is got maybe he just doesn't understand. Yeah, obviously he doesn't know who Tariq is, but nah, Tariq has got this dude, as they say, by the short and curlies. Cause yeah, whew, man. Yeah. I hate to see the I hate to see the damage that Tariq is gonna wreak on that dude's life. He's going to reek yeah. is gonna wreak havoc. Yeah, <laughs> in his reek box. So Nita, how do you think Tariq is gonna use him when he finds out that he stole this paper? Yeah, I always I always thought that this whole the reason why they were um, so focused on Professor Megram and the uh, Elder Barge dude is because <laughs> he, was going to, he was going to blackmail them and he was going to work his way because, you know, he's just trying to get his degree and so he's just gonna work that he's gonna blackmail him i don't think he gonna snitch on him but just the fact i know he's gonna use it mm -hmm. you know yeah. Tariq is gonna use it for sure you know it. So i'm just thinking it. somebody gonna get caught i don't know i wonder so he may find out that the um the dude elder bar is sleeping with all the students and then you know he kind of like Put a little something on him, give him something. But then he may also on the back end find out later on once he um read the book because you saw Lauren uh read, they had the book in the house. That's right. Mm. So he may come across and read it, and then that's number two. He got two strikes on him. So he might right. get that, that fast track degree real fast. <laughs> yeah, he could. right. <laughs> He's gonna get that degree quicker than you get an associate's degree in community college. He's about to get that shit fast. Now, mm. I think Professor Megram is gonna pick up and realize that Jabari stole this from Tariq, and then she's gonna go right to bat for Tariq, and then they both gonna have Jabari by the balls, as Larry was trying to say. And Reek is just gonna use Jabari to advance his degree. And I wouldn't even be surprised if he used him to start holding drug money or something to that effect. He's going to use him because you got to think about this. If it comes out that this book is not only is it successful and it sells a lot, but then on the back end, it comes out that he plagiarized from a student. This man's career is over. He's going to be flipping burgers somewhere. He will never be able to be a professor no publishing yeah. person is going to take him seriously no more. Yeah, his I'm career is problem. over. Right. His career is over. It's done. Right. So, and with Tariq knowing that he's going to have that much power, I wouldn't be surprised if Tariq make him wash his money. Tariq going to make him get his hands dirty somehow, some way. So, yeah. I don't yeah. know about the. I don't know about the washing the drugs. I mean, the washing the money, but definitely education wise, I think he's going to um, push him in that direction. I think he's definitely he, he, know. You gotta he be definitely. you can't trust everybody out there. No, you can't. But when you've got enough dirt, this is how people in the in the, in the drug game and in the, the mischievous game do it. I get dirt on you, you get dirt on me. Whoever has the most significant dirt on the other one has the leverage. And yeah, Tariq, just, Tariq gonna have some significant leverage on that man. Because that's what uh ghost did to Proctor. You yeah, know, that's yeah. how he got right. under his belt or whatever. Yep. But he I just want to know when Tariq is joining the track team. Is it this when, season or next season? When they give him <laughs> a contract for the Reek Bach, and then they pay me and Larry for discovering that name and putting it together, you know? and then he can get his deal. Yeah, that's that's when that's gonna happen. Yeah. That's what's gonna be. Yeah, I saw a comment, y'all, from Spill the Tea saying that um, Kane is going to be um, jealous of Tariq. 
So do you think in that situation, that might have been Tariq putting hands on Kane? Hell no. Tariq, I don't think so, but you no. never do know. No, Tariq's not a fighter. Tariq will kill you, but he ain't going to fight you. Uh, no, no. I no. mean, I, he's not going to do that to Monet's son. No, maybe it's no. Brayden. No. Maybe it's Brayden. Maybe Brayden's got some skills we don't know about. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. let him know that he can't be messing around with him like that. Like, kind of like, you know, put your dick on the table a little bit, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So I can chop it off. Put it on up there. <laughs> put, put put your meat out there so I can chop that bitch off. <laughs> oh Just Lord! Like that. Woo. Chop it off. <laughs> hold on, let me hold on. Let me reel you in. Okay, let me okay. reel you in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap for us tonight. We're here tripping too much. Be sure to subscribe to Nita the Diva's channel. Be sure to subscribe to Larry's channel. And as my man Buzz said earlier tonight, go to that website, gasenate.com. Make a contribution so that we can flip that Senate blue so that people that have been hurting for so long can get some funds flowing again. Essential workers can get some funds flowing again. Businesses that have to close because they're spiking in their communities, blue and red, ladies and gentlemen, can get some funding that we're not getting right now. So be sure to go to that, make a donation. And in the outro, Nita, what would you like to say to the people as we get out of here? Um, Y'all, make sure you follow me um, on Twitter, Nita Bougie, B O O B E E, Nita Bougie. And because I'm always active over there. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. I know that a lot of you guys did. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the chat. And Larry, Boy. it's on you now. Larry, let me say this because some people have hit me up saying they want us to get back to doing the stocks the way we was doing it. I quit yeah. doing them because. When I would make an individual video, nobody would watch it. The, only, the mm. only thing people watch on my channel is when I'm up here cussing and acting a fool. When I give people the conscious advice that has made me money in real estate and stocks, nobody wants to look at that because that's not really a video you need to be funny on. Mm. But what I'm thinking about doing is I did show Larry how to do options today as best I could. And a few right. of y'all are thinking about why don't we start doing a weekly chat up session where we can book conference call and we can talk about a strategy for that week to buy some options, invest in certain stocks. What is the market saying would be a good stock that you might can swing? So that's something I might entertain in the coming weeks. But Larry, the rest is on you and we out of here after Larry speaks. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be cool. I mean, I, you know, I did some, did some options. I did an option with, uh, with Lamont today. So, you know, um, I have a, I have a TD account and when I, you know, I, I opened a Robinhood account strictly for the options thing, because it really is a lot easier to do options with Robinhood when you, when, at least for me, when I look at like the Ameritrade app or the Ameritrade website, it just, it's not as simple as it is with Robinhood. It just takes some of that anxiety out of it you know when you're mm -hmm. when you're doing something it's just visually easier to work with so it, it definitely you know, is definitely. so i would say you know i mean if you guys are interested in something like that maybe yeah maybe we can all get together and do something like that online It'd be fun we can all you know throw different uh you know different stocks back and forth if you guys have done some research you want to share and we can share whatever research we do and we can all just talk about what's what and maybe we find some gems out there we can all profit from it so you know other than that, I will say, please, people, as I always do, I'm going to be a broken record and nag, nag, nag. Please mask up. Wear your mask. COVID is spiking to new record heights every single day. And this is not a joke. This is not some, some, uh, this is not some uh, conspiracy. We're talking about record numbers of infections, record numbers of deaths, record numbers of hospitalizations it's all going up the entire country there's not a single con there's not a single state in this country that it's in decline everybody is going up or holding steady so please wear a mask you know and stay home i mean let's not just not wear a mask continue to socially distance i mean i know it sucks it's been a long time sometimes you just want to get out i've been guilty of just needing to get out and and have gone out and I try and protect myself and those around me when I'm out and, you know, do the same. If you need to go to the grocery store or you need to go to buy something or you just need to get out and get some exercise, do that. But don't 
don't go out and just socialize. Don't go to somebody's Airbnb party. You know, don't go to a club. You know, don't go get a lap dance and and you know and and infect everybody. Just you know, just rent. Get spend that money. Spend that lap dance money on another month of Disney Plus or or Netflix and stay at home and, and enjoy your enjoy your TVs and movies and and relax. Well, you know, because I don't want anybody out there dying. Now I, I did out there getting sick and dying. I did hear this. I have no experience with this, and I did hear this. I, someone told me this. But because of the COVID pandemic, Pornhub is giving you free 4K access right now as we speak. And on that note, huh. because I, someone told me that, on that note, we're going to get you out <laughs> of here. Like, cool, I'm out. <laughs> Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, and get yourself a life game. Hit us up. Hit me Ooh. on Instagram if you want to join me and Larry when we game plan our stock plan for next week. We get you on the conference call. I'll teach you guys how to do options. I want to see you guys succeed because I am my brother's and sister's keeper. Until that next Sex is Hell video, we'll see you. <laughs>